Okay. We will start after a few minutes. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, maybe it is now already time. Just a second. Okay. Well, it, it seems it's already a time. A few one minutes to go, I think. In my okay, watch. thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Uh, yeah. So it will be my pleasure, maybe, to present Professor Zdenek Perutka. Um, there is, uh, of the protocol, I would like to ask him later if he has something in family with the famous European, the one of the most brilliant journalists of Europe, Ferdinand Perutka. Uh, I have you a photograph here. He was the, the president of the Czech department of the Radio Free Europe at a certain time, a oh, long time ago. But anyway, it is now to start the serious subject of uh, power electronics. And uh, Professor Zdenek Peruke has a very, very important role in that. He is a young man with a very much of achievement in this uh, area. Uh, he received a master's degree and PhD degrees in electrical engineering from the University of West Bohemia in Pilsen. Czech Republic in 2000, 2004, respectively. He is a full professor of power electronics and drives and the Dean of the Faculty of Electrical Engineering of the University of West Bohemia. From October, 2010 to June, 2016, he was a scientific director and principal investigator of the Research and Department Development Center, RICE at the University of West Bohemia. Since July, 2016, he has been a CEO and principal investigator of the Research and De Development Center of Horizons. He has published more than 200 papers in international journals and conference proceedings. He is the inventor of three international patents and three utility models. His main research topic is power electronics and drives for modern transport systems and power engineering. Professor Perutka, the floor is yours. Stan, thank you very much for your kind uh, introduction. I will try to share my screen with you. So let me to do it. Please start, you can. It should be this one. Okay. Okay, please just confirm me if you see my screen. Yes, we do. That's great. 
Ladies and gentlemen, first of all, uh, let me to congratulate to the Power Electronics and Motion Control Conference to the 50th anniversary, which is an important milestone for PMC community. And I am proud that I am a part of this community. Now let's back uh, to my today's speech. Uh, I will concentrate my, my attention today to the power electronics technology for distribution grids. I will start with a few words about the role of the power electronics in modern power generation and grids uh, from my perspective. And then I would like to concentrate uh, on uh, our idea about earth fault solution using power electronics based control current source. This is the technology which uh, we developed for more than 10 years. That's a very important project for us, uh, which were uh, developed under confidentiality. And we are now at the moment where we are ready for a serial production. And we would like to share with you our experience with this technology. And this will be the main content of my today's speech. The power electronics play a very important role in modern power generation and power grids. It is one of the main innovation driver in these technologies. In the power generation, it play a key role in the new technology for generators, the drives for uh, self-consumption systems in the power and heating plants. And uh, we can see in recent years the new technology, power electronics technology also in nuclear power plant in the safety systems, which highlight the importance of this technology also under such a demanding uh, technology such as nuclear power plants. The power electronics obviously play important role in the frequency conversion and play a very important role in the power source flexibility which is closely related to the installation and operation of energy storage systems in the power facilities, which is more and more often at the moment. In the power transmission, HVDC transition, uh, transmission play a very important role in modern power engineering. And I have to say that I didn't expect it in a couple of years uh, ago that we will go into such high voltages, high power range, that's amazing. In the future, not maybe so near, but uh, definitely in the future, the power electronics technology will play, in my opinion, an uh, important role in the power flow control. And let's go to the main point of my presentation. This is the power electronics and power distribution. The power electronics systems are inherent part of the low voltage uh, power grids. It play important role in the power routing, power quality, voltage control. We were talking about the power electronics or if you want solid state transformer technology, which Mariusz Malinowski mentioned uh, during his uh, yesterday keynote. Very important role plays power electronics in reliability in safety systems. Today, I will be talking about earth flow compensation system, but the power electronics play a very important role in new grid diagnostic services and provide new services for digitalization of the grid and brings very important grid intelligence. The power electronics uh, going to, is going to play a very important role in the medium voltage uh, power grids. And that's what I will be talking today. I will concentrate on uh, either isolated or high impedance grounded medium voltage power distribution grids, where the earth faults are the most common faults due to flashovers, uh, due to over voltages, insulator pollution, breakdown, contact with tree or birds. These phenomena are very well known. And uh, the ad faults play a very important role regarding uh, the reliability and safety of the power distribution grid. 
There is also the new phenomenon, which is closely related to increasing parasitic capacity of the grid, specifically in the large overhead lines and urban and suburban areas uh, operating the cable grids. And that's one of the problem which the power distributors are facing at present. I think that uh, all of you are very familiar with single phase at for theory. Just uh, to, to remind it, if we operate insulated or high impedance grounded uh, power distribution grids, the earth fault means that there exists a conductive path. Maybe I will try to. That there exists a. I'll use a laser pointer better. There exists a conductive part between one of the grid phases and the ground. And the Ford current flowing to the place of the Ford has two components, a capacitive component and active component. And we need to play with that. And we are trying to mitigate uh, the Ford current in the system uh, to operate, uh, still be able to operate uh, the grid under the earth fault. When the earth fault uh, occur, uh, the vo voltage vector diagram changed. Uh, the healthy phase to ground voltages uh, became the line to line voltages and we can uh, decompose uh, the, the final voltage uh, vector diagram into the positive sequence component and the zero sequence component, which is uh, the, which we will pay the main attention today. That's what we are trying to play when we would like to compensate uh, the, the earth fault. Just the equivalent circuit uh, under the earth fault, the single phase equivalent uh, circuit for the zero sequence component. Uh, we have uh, two feeders, the sound feeder, uh, the 40 feeder, and here you see the state-of-the-art solution uh, which we are using in the resonant uh, compensated grid. This is the arc suppression coil connected in between the neutral point of the distribution transformer and the, uh, and the ground. The functionality of the resonant grounding or arc suppression coil functionality can be explained in terms of the parallel resonance in between uh, the arc suppression coil and uh, the great parasitic capacitance, or we can explain the functionality of the arc suppression coil in the form uh, of the current source. We can imagine uh, the arc suppression coil uh, as the source of the inductive current. You can see it here, uh, which is caused by zero sequence uh, voltage uh, on, uh, on that. And this uh, inductive, current, which is uh, produced by the arc suppression coils, acts again the fourth capacitive current. So this is the state of the art technology having several limits. So what are the limits which I see with uh, the arc suppression coil operation? Definitely one of the big, pro big problem is uh, residual current because the arc suppression coil is able to compensate only a reactive current component of the Ford current. And it is able to compensate only a fundamental component of uh, this Ford capacitive current. The arc suppression coil is unable to compensate the active Ford uh, current component, and it is unable to compensate the higher harmonics in the Ford current. The problem is also a complex tuning which is not an easy task uh, to tune uh, the arc suppression coil. The problem is also a compensation of uh, large power grids, uh, which leads uh, to low impedance grounding, having several consequences uh, within uh, the protection of such uh, power grid. The compensation current, which is produced by arc suppression coil is always dependent on zero sequence voltage. The coil is often source of uh, harmonics when saturated, and there is one important uh, drawback. The zero sequence current flows through the distrib distribution transformer and load it. 
So we have been thinking how to overcome these constraints of the state-of-the-art technology, which is operated in uh, the power grids for more than 100 uh, years. And we came with uh, the power electronics based solution. We came with uh, the active current source, which can operate together with uh, arc suppression coil or fully independently of arc suppression coil and can replace the arc suppression coil in the grid. Uh, the problem is how to calculate uh, the compensation current, which behaves based on the first uh, Kirchhoff's law in, in this uh, note, it means that if we will be able to produce a compensation current, which will have the same magnitude like the fault current, but opposite phase, then we will be able to mitigate the fault current and comp fully compensate uh, the ground fault uh, of the, of the power, in the power grid. We came with two fundamental ideas where to connect uh, our uh, fully controlled current source. The first, and uh, we, uh, we covered that with, with, with the patents. So we have two international patents covering the, these technology depending on the location of the current source in the power grid. The first possible location of the current source is that we can connect our controlled current source between the neutral point of the distribution transformer and the ground. Uh, and the ground. It is definitely a very cheap solution. And uh, the current source can be simply connected to auxiliary winding of existing arc suppression coil. And in this way, we do not need uh, to, to put into the system any transformer. And it leads to a further cost reduction. On the other hand, there is a plenty of drawbacks of this uh, location of the, the active current source compensated the, the fault current. This solution is not suitable for standalone compensation because we need an external power supply. And it also brings us um, quite strict power limits. Moreover, the installation using arc suppression coil, the auxiliary winding of the arc suppression coils leads uh, to the still problems with the resonant grounding. So we did not uh, overcome one of the uh, problems of uh, the passive compensation of the fault current. The zero sequence current flows still through the transformer, obviously. And uh, there is uh, not possibility to, uh, to control the negative sequence component. And of course, we are unable to, uh, to provide the grid with the additional functionalities which the alternative solution uh, can offer. Therefore, we built the final prototype in this configuration. That's a configuration which I love, and that's uh, the configuration when the active current source is connected between the phase conductors of the grid and the ground. It eliminates the drawbacks of resonant grounding. We can take the active power necessary for the operation of the device directly from the power grid, so we do not need any external source. And generally, we have no power limits in this configuration. This device is suitable for distributed com compensation, which means that it can be installed anywhere in the grid. We do not need a neutral point uh, for the installation of this device. All zero sequence currents float outside the distribution transformer, and we can control uh, positive, negative, as well as zero sequence component. And we can offer in this configuration additional functionalities such as active power filtering, uh, statcom functionality, and many other fe uh, features. The penalty for this configuration is uh, higher cost, and we need an additional transformer to be able to connect this device into the grid. How the current source operates. The first figure, which you see here, is uh, the operation of the grid without uh, the ground fault. When the 
third fault occur, we can observe immediate uh, rise of the fault current, which has, uh, as I said at the beginning, two components, the capacitive one and the active one. And our current source start immediately to compensate uh, the fault current producing the compensation current having the same magnitude and opposite phase. You can see how the compensation current uh, rise and uh, acts against the red fault current. And finally, we are able by the, our current source to fully compensate the fault current in the system. So that's uh, the idea how the system works and this is the simulation result. What we can see on the next uh, slide is that if we will operate only the arc suppression coil, the arc suppression coil is depending on the zero sequence voltage able to, to generate the inductive current which acts against the fault current which is in this quadrant. In our case, we are able to shift and adjust the compensation current, and we are able to fully compensate the fault current, including its active component, as well as high harmonics, which is very important. The problem is, the idea is very simple, but the problem is how to calculate the compensation current. The compensation current can be calculated from the Kirchhoff's uh, current law in uh, this node. And if we have a look on uh, the circuit configuration, the compensation current can be divided from uh, the known or measurable zero sequence voltage and the grid impedance. So if we will be able to know the grid impedance, then we are able to, uh, to calculate the compensation current generally for N feeders, generally for N feeders and M harmonics. And the forward current is equal to compensation current plus the zero sequence uh, current of all N feeders in a system. The problem is how to identify the grid impedance. Nevertheless, we have one big benefit we have a current source installed in the system. Our power electronics converter is able to generate a testing signal by which we are able to identify in real time the grid impedance. We implemented uh, two possible uh, technique, multi-frequency analysis, and we have the best experience with uh, the pseudo direct response analysis. It means that we inject into the grid, uh, the pseudo Dirac impulse. We know uh, current impulse. We know its frequency composition and we measure the voltage response of the grid. We do the frequency analysis and based on the, these frequency analysis, we can calculate the grid impedance in the real time. And it makes us uh, possible to calculate uh, the necessary compensation grid, uh, current, which we are generating by our device. Based on this idea, we developed uh, in uh, Ritze a first prototype of this device, having the rated power of 1.35 megavolt amps. And this prototype is dedicated to be installed for the installation in the power grid with the rated voltage of 22 kV and offers a compensation current of 100 amps RMS. The device has two main components. It is a compensation transformer. And in our case, uh, we develop it in the first generation, a low voltage converter, which is connected to the secondary winding of this transformer. The transformer, has a, it is a three-phase transformer with a star-connected primary winding, uh, which neutral point is grounded. And we are operating as three independent, if you want the separated secondary windings where our converters are connected. We came with a special uh, design of the transformer, which make us possible to optimize or properly uh, design 
the zero sequence impedance of the transformer by which we are able without any uh, intervention of the converter compensate part of the uh, fault current. In this prototype, uh, we designed the, the transformer in that way that uh, the transformer is able to, to offer 40 amps of total compensation current, of, which is of 100 amps. It means that we are able to, uh, to provide 40% of the compensation current without any necessary intervention by power converter, which make us possible to save 40% uh, of the silicon in the converter. And it leads to a significant cost savings. The very important uh, feature of the, the configuration is also that we uh, operate uh, the system significantly under tuned. That it means that the reason and frequency given by zero sequence impedance of the transformer acting uh, with a great uh, capacitance is significantly below uh, the, the, the operated frequency of the grid, which has the positive impacts in the reduced asymmetry of the grid and the reduced the zero sequence component of the voltage. So here, this is just for illustration, how we are creating the compensation current. If there is a third fault, uh, there is a fault current IF, this uh, red vector, which we are compensating partially by the transformer. So uh, the, the orange uh, vectors are particular currents uh, generated by particular phases of the transformer. And remaining part of the compensation current is generated uh, by the converter, which is connected to the secondary winding of our transformer. Speaking in numbers, uh, the converter is able to generate 20 amps of the compensation current per phase. So it means uh, that 60% of the total compensation current is in the case of our prototype produced by the power electronics converter and remaining 40% uh, secure the transformer. This ratio can be adjusted by the uh, transformer design. So if we need to save more silicon, we can. Just a brief idea how our converter looks like. It is a three-phase converter where we are using a modular topology with the fundamental building blocks of, with the rated power of 150 kVA, which make us possible easy scaling of our device. And uh, we are operating uh, in uh, our prototype three um, fundamental building blocks uh, uh, in parallel. And they are connected via an LCL filter to a secondary winding of uh, the converter transformer. A few words about the control. Uh, we have uh, several control modes. A positive sequence components are controlled in rotating reference frame DQ, which is uh, linked with the grid voltage, while the zero sequence component is controlled by a proportional resonant controller. We have two master control loops. The first one is the, the control of the DC link of our converter, which commands uh, the active component of uh, the positive sequence current. And uh, the master control, which is responsible for the generation of uh, reactive component of zero sequence of positive sequence component in case when uh, the stat confectionality is demanded. And the master control is also responsible for the generation of the compensation current command. How the compensation current is uh, generated? We do the online estimation of the parasitic capacitance and parasitic resistance of the grid, as I explained it using the pseudo direct impulse and we measure a zero sequence voltage. 
With these known parameters, we are able to calculate the fault current, having the reactive part and having an active part. The fault current is partially compensated by the transformer. This current can be calculated from the zero sequence uh, impedance of the transformer and the known uh, zero sequence voltage. And remaining part of the compensation current, it means uh, when we subtract uh, the compensation current generated by the transformer from the total fault current, we get the command for the generation of the compensation current by our converter. We had the several levels of the testing of our prototype. First, we started with the experiment if uh, in our uh, whole laboratory for medium voltage uh, transportation system, and uh, that's a tech and medium voltage power electronic systems. That's a technology which we are very proud of and make it as possible to test this technology in house. Uh, the initial test has been in the configuration uh, that we built uh, artificial uh, network with two feeders, the sound feeder and the 40 feeder where we emulated uh, the ground fault. And we did the initial test in the labs at the voltage levels of 3, 10 and finally target 22 kV. Here, you can see how danger can be uh, non-compensated to the earth fault. So this is uh, the video which proposingly shows um, what can happen in the system if you do not properly compensate the ground fault. Current. Just to illustrate how fast our compensation could be, here you see uh, the generation of the compensation current. Here you see the current by the faulty feeder. Here you see uh, the current by the sound feeder and uh, the fault is compensated when the currents uh, are of identical phase angle, which you can see that occur very fast. So we, can, we are able to compensate the ground fault below 20 milliseconds. After the laboratory test, we install it, uh, our prototype in a substation 110 to 22 kV and started uh, the test in field. We start with the artificial earth faults on overhead lines. We did uh, the test of all four types, solid one, resistive one, as well as arcing. Here you can see uh, the illustration video of what ha happened uh, when you face the arcing at fault, which uh, was intentionally only partially compensated. And on the second video, you can see what is the behavior of the system when our device fully compensates uh, the ground fault. Just a few waveforms. This is uh, the recordings from the solid uh, single phase earth fault. Here you see uh, the phase to ground voltages. Uh, the, uh, this is the place when the fault, uh, earth fault occur. You can uh, clearly see how the zero sequence voltage increase. This is the magenta line. And here you can see how our device immediately react, increasing uh, the compensation current. The magenta one is the total compensation current and uh, remaining uh, waveforms represents the phase currents of the, at the primary winding of the trans converter transformer. We also evaluated the effectivity in comparison uh, of our device in comparison to, to arc suppression coil. Uh, nevertheless, we stress our device by very strict uh, conditions. We turn it off the compensation of the residual current. It means that uh, we turn it off the compensation of uh, active component of fault current as well as higher harmonics because the arc suppression coil is unable to do it. And uh, we also stress uh, uh, our device with uh, specific uh, emulation of the earth fault 
when uh, the earthfall had been emulated on uh, the part of the grid which was switched off there was uh, made uh, the earth fault and then we turn it on this section of the line and of course uh, the fault current uh, occur immediately after the uh, switching on this uh, section of the grid and we were unable because as i said and as i explained it we are identifying uh, the grid impedance in real time under no fault conditions so we were unable uh, to exactly identify the, the the total grid impedance due to this missing part of the grid so therefore our uh, compensation current was not uh, fully optimal even under, under these unfair conditions our device this is the upper figure significantly outperformed the arc suppression coil the final current has been uh, of half of the residual current uh, for the optimally tuned arc suppression coil in september 2019 we started the autonomous operation of our device in the power grid of 22 kV. So we already passed almost two years of the pilot operation of this device in the real grid operation. We faced up to uh, of around uh, 500 earth fault strikes, which were detected and successfully compensated. We had also the chance uh, to test our device under the extreme condition where we faced uh, uh, the sub-in storm during the February 2020 in the, in the Czech Republic. The technology contribution. So we offer by our idea and our device very fast and effective fault current compensation. A dynamics is excellent. The fault is compensated below 20 milliseconds. We are able to secure the full uh, zero residual current. It means that we are able to fully compensate the fault current, including the active fault current component as well as higher harmonics in the fault current. We are able to compensate the arcing. And by a special control intervention, we are able to prevent new arc ignitions. Compensation current, which we are generating, has an arbitrary shape and is independent of zero sequence voltage. We are operating the device outside problematic reason on point, which uh, improve uh, the symmetricity of the grid voltage and reduce the zero sequence component on the uh, trouble free operation. We are able to actively compensate the grid non symmetry. We are getting the power supply directly from the grid, so we have uh, we can offer the full standalone operation, and we are able to generate uh, the positive sequence, zero sequence, as well as negative sequence components of, of the current. We came with the new features to the grid where we are combining the earth fault compensation together with reactive power compensation under no photo operation of the grid. We can secure the active uh, harmonic compensation. We can act like an active power filter. We are able, because we uh, behave like uh, a, a fully controlled current source, which is installed in the system, we can provide the new grid diagnostic features and uh, we uh, offer for, this, uh, for the grid uh, several functions uh, for the digitalization. What is an important uh, result? Our device uh, fully comply with very strict uh, demands by uh, Australian rapid earth fault current limiter for minimization of the risk of the fire. So uh, we are able to comply with uh, these strict requirements. What are the future plans? We are at the moment ready for the serial production. We successfully uh, passed the validation of the technology by almost two years long operation in the real power grid. 
The technology has uh, a covered IP by international patents, and we already started the negotiation on the sale of the license. So I hope that we will be able uh, to be on the market very soon. The next research directions I see in the new functions for the monitoring and active diagnostic of the grid. Specifically, we are working on the fault localization using our device, which has been already uh, implemented in our device and we are now at the stage of the, the field validation. And I see the big potential in the new features in combination of uh, our device, of our current source with the energy storage system or renewable resources, generally the combination of the power source with our device, which can bring uh, the new features, for example, for the dynamic grid stability, such as peak uh, power shaving, et cetera. I would like to highly appreciate the effort on my team working on this technology. And specifically, I would uh, like to highlight uh, two, two gentlemen, Tomáš Komerska and Jakub Tala, which are significantly helping me uh, to push uh, this technology to the final product. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your attention and I am open for your questions. Thank you so much, Professor Perutka, for your very extensive and very important for us lecture. Uh, I think we will have a lot of questions now. So please, we have uh, several minutes to dedicate to questions. If the colleagues are still hesitating, I have something to ask you. Maybe it's not my, it shouldn't be my first question, but um, I will play the role, uh, as we say here, of the lawyer of the devil. So um, you use uh, a transformer to economize on your semiconductors. Well, I, I agree. It's uh, the transformer is from the 19th century, the most efficient uh, equipment we have, but. First of all, it is a middle voltage. Second, you use your converter in the secondary side of the transformer, it is 400 volt transformer. So yeah. um, uh, it is a um, classical device. If you use some new devices, as they say, even some uh, secret uh, Russians say they have uh, 20 kilovolt devices already. Uh, what do you think about the future of this? Is it possible to make it for uh, um, directly using, because you say 40% of the effort is uh, due to the transformer and then you use the semiconductors, the converters on the other side to make the, the necessary mathematics and to compensate the, this uh, um, short circuit. Well, uh, is it possible by your opinion and uh, what do you think about the new devices and what do you think about the future in the more higher voltage, not the middle voltage, 20 kilovolt is inside our faculty. But uh, this is, of course, it's very important for the railways, but in uh, many countries, the railways are by 16 Hertz. So it is not 50 Hertz, it will be more difficult for transformer, it's more heavier. Um, okay, just uh, about your opinion, but I'm still waiting for somebody else to, to ask for questions. Okay, okay, Stan, I will go step by step. The first, uh, just a remark, we are talking about the three phase systems, uh, which are uh, all around the world operated at uh, 50 or 60 Hertz mm -hmm. and uh, 22 kV, um, or we have also exceptionally 35 kV, that's a, uh, that's a standard uh, in, uh, in the Czech Republic and also in uh, other European countries. Mm -hmm. Uh, regarding the new uh, configuration of the of the converter or the proper mix 
between uh, the transformer and uh, the secondary voltage uh, uh, or, and generally the voltage for which uh, the converter is designed for. This is a cost question. Uh, of course, uh, if uh, you, we are able in general to, to build, for example, the cascaded converter, which can be directly connected uh, to the grid. Johan Kolar had a very nice presentation yesterday, and I do agree with him uh, that the multi-level or generally the cascaded uh, configurations are, are the future. Are one of the future trends uh, where the power electronics will goes, uh, goes to. So we can uh, develop and we can manufacture the converter for, for the full voltage of the power distribution grid. But the question will be um, if it will be competitive from the cost point of view. Uh, the transformer will, uh, is of course a way how to save a expensive silicon. And that's the reason why we did it. Of course, we can discuss what is uh, the proper voltage at the secondary winding. We used uh, a conventional 400 volts uh, due to the conventional technology of the converter, which uh, we had available in our lab. So that's the, the very simple, simple reason. It was conventional technology making us possible to de develop and manufacture very fast the converter. It is not the optimal voltage because if you will increase uh, the power then we will pay the penalty for very high current at the secondary winding and the transformer will also not be an optimal one and will be uh, will be will be expensive too expensive so we can of course increase uh, the converter voltage but i don't see uh, the future in the converter without any, any inductive component in the system. Because uh, the zero sequence uh, impedance, which we bring into the system by the transformer is very beneficial. And also secure us a partial compensation of the ground fault in case uh, that uh, our converter is uh, tripped. So that's my, my answer, Stan, if uh, it is sufficient for you. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank you, Zdenek. Please, questions. There is a question in, this, in the chat from Professor Bauer. I see a great application field in the railways, 25 kilo volts, 50 hertz. Do you need to change the norms to accommodate the new protection device? No. Uh, I think that it is not necessary to change any standard. We are complete with uh, the old standards for the protection in the, the power grid. And at the moment, uh, we are operating already in the power grid. Uh, our first prototype is uh, almost two years a part of a regular operation of the substation and uh, we are just collecting the data at the moment and uh, we uh, fulfill all services demanded by the power distribution uh, operator. I have a question as well. You, you mentioned that you measure the impedance of the grid. How often you do this? <laughs> in the range of seconds. Okay. So every second you are measuring it. Of or... course, the sampling period can be adjusted as we need, uh, but at the moment uh, we are in the range of a couple of seconds. Okay. We can do it in generally faster. Nevertheless, that's the question if it is reasonable or not, because in general, the changes of the configuration of the grid are not so often. So uh, the sampling period for the estimation of the grid uh, in the range of a couple of seconds is fully sufficient. What, what is, is very... Sorry. Sorry. What, what Sorry, is very... Yep. May I? Yeah. 
Uh, my uh, my pronunciation about this uh, rice, I said rice, but you say ritze. Uh, what is that? What does it mean? Ritze? Yeah. Ritze is the shortcut for uh, Research and Innovation Center for Electrical oh. Engineering. That's an R&D center, which is uh, or, or sitting at the Faculty of Electrical Engineering. That's almost a trademark for the strategic R&D activities of the Faculty of Electrical Engineering in Pilsen. Looks impressive. Thank you. Any more questions? So please let me thank again, Professor Perutka. It was uh, really uh, very new for me at least. And it is very interesting as a future, probably also developed a little bit more in the semiconductor way, but uh, it is uh, helping to avoid a lot of the difficulties of our uh, middle voltage distribution network. So thank you so much, Professor Perot. It was a pleasure for me. Thank you very much. Okay, so now we have a few minutes of break before our plenary session, I guess. Uh, so my suggestion is, is to wait until, until given time to allow all interested people to join the session. So, okay. So thank you once again. Thank you, guys.
Dzień dobry Wodku, miło Cię zobaczyć. No, chociażby na ekranie. Krzysztof Zawilski. Masz wyłączony mikrofon. Młodek masz, mikrofon masz wyłączony, Młodek. Um, mine is not. Um, well, I will switch it off. Hello to everybody. Good morning. Ja, Krzysztof, ty się nic nie zmieniasz. No nawzajem, nawzajem. <laughs> Bez trudu cię rozpoznaję jeszcze. Mimo słabego wzroku, coraz słabszego. <laughs> no tak, to, to coś tam nam dolega zawsze w wieku, ale... To można, tak, można... Pływasz jeszcze? Proszę, pływasz? No, tak, znaczy, no, w zeszłym roku niestety nie, <laughs> bo... Wiadomo, no, dlaczego. No tak, pandemia, tak. Ale mam przełożone dzięki tej pandemii na ten rok, znaczy automatycznie, ale nie wiem, czy się uda. Zobaczymy. No dobrze, świetnie. Świetnie. Widzę, że Włodek, Włodek się pokazał, tylko nie ma włączonego mikrofonu. No tak, tak, tutaj do mnie nawet dzwonił przed tym przed tą imprezą. Dzień dobry dla wszystkich. Dzień dobry, Krzysztof. O, tak, dzień dobry, cześć, cześć. Dzień Miło Cię usłyszeć. Dzień dobry. Dzień dobry. dobry. Witajcie. Jest. Pani Kowalska. O, tele, pani Teresa. Miło się, że jeszcze mu. Dobrze. Before we start, I, I can show you that we prepared, uh, let's say, anniversary cake. I don't know if it's visible in your screen or not. Oh. <laughs> we can see now. Uh. Send a part to Warsaw, please. <laughs> I am not sure about quality after transportation. Can we print it on a 3D printer? No. I guess time time approach. So before the session start, uh, I I propose a, a bit of music at the beginning. And what you will think? Oh. On behalf of Stanislav Hadenas, Śląsk, Song and Dance Ensemble, we would like to welcome all participants of the International Conference on Power Electronics and Motion Control, Gliwice 2021. 
Congratulations on the 50th anniversary of the PMC conference series. We would like to invite you to an accept from the gala program of the Śląsk Ensemble, the Ambassador of Polish Culture.
So good morning, ladies and gentlemen. The opening of this special session could have been more impressive than this beautiful polonaise. Thank you for uh, this uh, organizing of the conference. Let me introduce the co-chairs of the session, of the special celebration session. Peter Corondi, Secretary of the PMC Council, and Vladimir Kochara, Honorary Chair and one of the founders of the PMC Council. The Power Electronics and Motion Control Conference was founded in the second half of the past century, more than 50 years ago, with a slightly different name and more local orientation. You should remember that this is the oldest power electronic conference in Europe. That conference had the great and powerful drivers, Professor Istvan Nagy, and many outstanding members of the PMC Council who contributed to the growth of this conference. Gradually, Professor Nagy and PMC Council shaped and established this conference into a well-known internationally recognized scientific event. I will not talk about the history because first, two of the founding fathers of the PMC Council, Professor Marian Piotr Kaczmierkowski and Professor William Fedak, will reflect on the history of the PMC Council and the PMC Conference Series. Then the award committee will grant the Istvan Nadi Award, an outstanding service and achievement award to a number of distinguished scientists. In the end, I will wrap up the celebration with a toast. Marian, floor is yours. Please present the history of the PMC Council and PMC Conferences. Thank you. But should I share my screen or I will be... If you have a presentation ready, please share your screen. Thank you, and uh, <coughs> welcome to our presentation about the history of the PMC. At the beginning, I would like to uh, thanks to express my thanks to William Fedak, my co-author, who enriched enriched this uh, presentation with a number of photo and uh, posters. So I'm uh, very grateful to him. Uh, thank you, William. <coughs> okay, I am great also. We will follow this outline <coughs> step by step for conference history, then PMC hours, PMC chairman, and uh, posters from the PMC conferences. So here you see the first poster, uh, beautiful, presented, uh, prepared by uh, Professor William Fedak. And uh, you see, you can uh, see all conferences, 19 conferences and location and uh, general terms. You may print this and uh, take it to your office or to your to history or your, of your group. <clears throat> Before funding the PMC Council, the first conference, uh, in fact, first uh, five, five conferences uh, uh, organized as uh, national conferences in Budapest, uh, Hungary. And as you see here, it was uh, given uh, uh, by Professor Excuse me, excuse me, Marian, your voice sometimes uh, cut off. Can technician do something for it? I can't hear your voice clearly. Oh, I will try to speak very narrow to microphone. Is better now? Yes, it's better. Okay, now it's better. Thank you. So the first national conference in PMC was organized by Professor Isvan Rat, by the way, very well known professor, and he was the funder and also together with uh, Professor Kovacs, this uh, complex space vector theory, which is now so popular, using uh, multi 
interface system. Then, uh, so starting from 85 uh, or uh, 77, the, this conference become more and more international. <coughs> and uh, in uh, 90, there was first time in, uh, in uh, with also as uh, co-organizer was the Polish uh, Society of uh, Electrical Engineers and Herman was at that time Professor Wojciech Kochara. And uh, the next conference was uh, under his uh, chair. Uh, he was the chair and uh, was in Warsaw. Then uh, in uh, Budapest in 96, uh, PMC, uh, chaired by Professor Ivan, uh, funded the PMC Council, and this was uh, uh, starting invited uh, Professor Nadi invited representatives for small and middle-sized countries, and uh, to form a group under the banner of PMC to promote uh, uh, conferences and interest in power electronics and. And uh, the first uh, idea, ordinary proposed was, you know, to not only to conferences, but also symposia, workshop, tutorials, exhibition, and so on. Uh, also, we wanted, uh, because that was the start of the United Europe, we wanted to cooperate, to prepare uh, joint research projects, and uh, meetings were a very good occasion to discuss this. Among the PMC Council Foundation, that you see, they were a representative of uh, practically middle European country and uh, shows from those uh, from Italy. Uh, you see the old people you know and uh, the uh, names with, uh, in blue were future uh, conference chairs. Uh, I was uh, happy to be among these uh, funding members together with Professor Kotara and Professor Tondos. The main goal, as you see here, was uh, on the PMC Council, is to keep organizing international conference in the field power electronics and motion control, circulating in Europe as direct continuation of a conference series in the field starting in Budapest. 1970. Here is the uh, list of the conference topics. This, uh, of course, expand from uh, time to time with, together with the expanding of our area. Uh, in 98, in Black was the 8 PMC, led by Professor Danek Cherovsky. And based on the uh, good relation and cooperation, with uh, PMC EP Council uh, for Alan Professor Kotsara and for uh, who was the member of the executive committee and also uh, Professor Notch who wanted to uh, bring uh, to connection. So uh, finally in uh, RAC was signed agreement between uh, EPE Association and PMC Council and that was the start of the uh, conferences in new logo EPE PMC. There were seven conferences, as you see, uh, very nice conferences. The last conference in Novichat was organized in cooperation with uh, ECC, here is uh, coal, but in fact, uh, in uh, uh, industrial, uh, no power electronic society from IEEE, represented at the time by Professor. Dusan Borojovic, who uh, came originally from Novi Sad. Uh, in 2013, the AP signed an agreement with PELT uh, for organizing joint conferences in Europe. And uh, after much discussion, I think about almost two, uh, two years, the PMC Council decided not to sign this uh, agreement. And in this way, the AP logo disappears from the PMC conferences, and we came to PMC only. And uh, the next conference in uh, 2014 in Antalya, Turkey was as uh, 
DMT conference. So in meantime, uh, taking in account that uh, IEEE Technical Societies has sponsored DMC conference in the Industrial Electronics Society since 1998 and since 2008. So therefore, since 2016, we adopted the IEEE PMC logo expressing uh, support of IEEE service. And the next conference starting from Varna, Budapest and Livit uh, was uh, under the name IEEE PMC. Uh, in uh, PMC country also was created uh, awards committee as was in 2000 in Kosice, and uh, we operate uh, up to 2016. Uh, uh, there was representative, representative as you see from the Middle Europe country and the, the main goal was to propose the candidate for the life achievement uh, PMC award and also we have organized a competition uh, between the uh, conference presentation in every conference that was always three prizes. Uh, since 2016 the awards committee uh, expand and as you see there are people not only from Europe but also from Turkey, France, not, uh, not only from Middle Europe as it was earlier, but also uh, from other countries. And only one person who connected this uh, committee was is Professor William Fedak. <clears throat> An example of our ceremony you see here from the right side, Professor Flede Blavier gets uh, laureate. And then from left, you see Professor uh, George Ashoff that from the EPEPMC because it was in Crete in Macedonia. Uh, he presented the diploma. And then we have uh, Professor Marcel Rousseau, past president and representative of EPE Council, Professor Marsh as the uh, president of our country, and then me as uh, 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 I just uh, read the uh, citation of uh, this part. Here you have a collection of uh, many other, uh, starting from '96. Uh, the first uh, was Professor Leonard um. uh, from Germany, and then you see that many famous professors uh, were recognized with this uh, awards. We tried uh, as award committee to select always somebody from uh, Middle Europe or Europe and somebody from outside USA or Japan. In 2000 uh, or since, since 2018, this uh, life uh, are named as uh, Istvan Nagy, not Howard. So the first uh, recipient were uh, Professor Troy from South Korea, Emil Levy from UK. And who will be the next uh, laureate we will learn uh, today after this presentation. Uh, also, the, uh, in this year, the Glivice organizing uh, committee of Glivice has prepared such a nice plaque uh, to is van Dutch Award. Here you see the collection of the uh, chairman of PMC conferences starting from Is van uh, in uh, up to today in uh, uh, Marius Stempin in Gliwice. The next part is are the posters which you can use also in your history. Uh, simply started from the first conference uh, with Professor Istvan Raj and then Istvan Raj. Uh, I wanted to point out that uh, in PMC 90, as I uh, mentioned, the Polish Society, Society of uh, Electrical Engineers were the co-organizer. And the next conference was in Warsaw under chairmanship of Professor Bodinius Kotara was very successful also, and uh, uh, you see here, Conference Veni, this is the main building of our 
Warsaw University, Warsaw University of Technology. The next uh, seventh uh, conference where the PMT Council was established. And then uh, you see the PMC by with Professor Zdenek Tzerowski in Prague. Uh, uh, we achieved also over 4,400 participants. The first conference in SEPPMC was organized by Professor William Fedak in Kosice. So you may see here also some uh, representative of the uh, PMC Council and uh, guests uh, on the um, opening session. Some uh, photos from uh, Lomis, Professor Janek Jarowski, here uh, Dr. Magyar, Dr. Magyar also in Jarowski, and uh, from other side you see the, uh, uh, in fact, the meeting of uh, EPE and PMC together, and uh, here the operation of the committee on uh, awards. Fantastic conference uh, in uh, from Professor Drago Brand, the chairman in Dubrovnik, of course, fantastic place that was for us a uh, nice experience. And this uh, came with the absolute record 580 participants from 54 countries. Uh, the, 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 everybody wanted to see Dubrovnik. The next conference, Professor Leonis Ribitsky, uh, th th that time he was uh, the vice rector of the Riga Technical University. He organized perfectly this conference, also nice town. Here is the place uh, where the conference uh, was organized and the uh, view of the session. So also beautiful place selected by Professor Karel Jezernik. He is originally from Uni Maribor, uh, but it was in uh, uh, what I report, Slovenia. Fantastic place also for us because it was uh, very close to Italy, but the prices were 20, 30% lower as in Italy. And it was very important for our pocket. And also, the view of ceremony in this conference as a uh, conference chairman. Uh, me, the Nordic who invited also Professor Leonard, the first laureate uh, of this. Here, the extended PMC Council meeting during the conference. The association representative, you may see here or uh, next to uh, the Professor Dorandeland, who, who was at the time the, the president of. I wanted to point out also that to this uh, meeting came also Professor Robert Lawrence and Professor uh, Rick de Donker. Professor Rick de Donker was that time the president of the Power Electronic Society and uh, Professor Lawrence was the president of the Industrial Application Society of ICPD, and they first time, time presented the idea what they wanted to develop, that is uh, unification of all power electronics conferences under one umbrella uh, and uh, organizing uh, separately only one conference in Europe, one in Japan and one in the USA. So it's, this took uh, some time to implement this idea. Uh, anyway, as you, uh, as I said, uh, the PMC didn't follow this way. The next conference uh, was in uh, 2008 uh, in uh, German Professor Zawirski from Poznan. Also very good, uh, many participants, they came. Uh, at that time, I remember many of them uh, were from Germany because of the neighborhood. And also, uh, you may recognize here some people, maybe you will find yourself in this photo. This again from Poznan, you see here uh, the uh, 
the representative of the PMC Council, Professor Kochara, Professor Zawirski, as the chairman of the conference, Pretoria Zernik, Fedak, Nadi, Mitzewski, me, and Professor Drago Ban. The next conference, also beautiful place, uh, the, the Ochrit. Uh, I first time recognized that the Ochrit, Ochrit Lake is so beautiful and that Macedonia has a so, uh, fantastic uh, landscape. <coughs> you see here some uh, photos from this conference, the uh, closing session from Lesnar, Mirzewski, and Ireland as uh, APA Association representative. And here, uh, photos from audience, you may recognize here very famous Professor Lipo, uh, Tom Lipo, and Professor uh, uh, Fred Blabirk, the laureate of our Life Achievements Hour. So here, Professor, uh, Dr. Bridget Snyder, the Secretary of AP Executive Council. Uh, here is some view of the uh, gala dinner. The next conference was uh, organized by Professor Vladimir Katic uh, in uh, Novitat. You see here that is Serbia, and uh, here you see the, uh, of the audience during the opening session, and also maybe nice uh, picture in which uh, Professor Katic is giving to Professor Kolak the two PMC symbols, uh, and then the back. That uh, was uh, the, the, for the next conference was uh, in Antalya organized by Professor Herman. Professor Ilham Kolak, and uh, also a very, very nice place. And uh, you see the audience here. Uh, I may recognize here Professor Joachim Holtz from Germany and many others. The next conference came uh, in, well, uh, very organized by Professor Stanimir Valtev. Uh, he is originally from Bulgaria, but uh, Currently, is professor in the University Nova in, in Lisboa. Also, we may see here a keynote lecture given by Professor Pavel Bauer, uh, Bauer, who is now the chairman of PMC. <laughs> in Warna, we learn also that uh, Professor Notch passes from 60, 60, uh, 2015 in Budapest in 84. And uh, important is the last uh, sentence, our duty and privilege to keep PMC Council and PMC Conference Series moving forward. Uh, we try to keep this. This is the picture from the, some uh, lunch. And the next uh, conference, uh, 90, uh, 28, was uh, organized by Peter Korondi in Budapest again. Some pictures in poster sessions, then uh, the view of the uh, audience during the session, and uh, the, mo the moment of uh, uh, giving the sign of EP PMC to Professor Resik, who represented uh, at that time the uh, Grivice University, Technical University, the host of this conference. Here also the, that was approved uh, by PMC Council, the, the, the conference in Gliwice, and uh, now we landed in uh, Gliwice with uh, Chairman Professor Marius Stempi. Of course, the data are not so large as uh, uh, clear because of the Pandemia, we understand this. Uh, unfortunately, uh, several members uh, died and they left us. And here we uh, we like to collect them to for memory. And uh, of course, Professor Isvan Notch, uh, Izzy Pavelka from uh, Prague University. Uh, then uh, we have another FEDCO. Let's do my case and uh, Sergei Rivkin, my case from Union of Johannesburg, 
South Africa and Rivkin from Moscow, Russia. They were really good friends and also fans of our conferences that attend systematically our conferences. Uh, and also the Sinmerai from uh, Hungary. Uh, the history of the PMC Council started, of course, from Professor Naji as the chair, 96 up to practically 2016, but we know that he uh, died at 15. But uh, the new chairman was uh, signed in 2016 in Varna. And now the, the PMC chairs, uh, uh, in uh, uh, such a presidium, which the, uh, professor, in which Professor Bauer is chair, and then we have a representative of Hungary, Slovakia, and Poland uh, as vice chairs. We know all those uh, professors. Let's go me to conclusion. Mm. I like to see. Okay, so uh, this uh, fifth anniversary allowed us to see how the PMC developed from national Hungarian conference through European World conferences. Also, through a series of conferences, the PMC Council made it possible to meet and exchange ideas and present the achievements of. Generation of scientists from Central, Europe, Central and Eastern Europe and uh, organizing the cheaper 50% of what the AP in Western Europe uh, wanted at that time conferences. And finally, as representative of the, the parting, let's say, old generation that led to the successes of the PMC in the past, on the occasion of the fifth Jubilee. I would like to wish you and new generation of activities and volunteers of harmonious cooperation with the further development and continuation of, continuation of successes of the PMC under your young leadership. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Marian. Thank you for this beautiful presentation and especially the wise words uh, at the end. I think that uh, we can conclude that the uh, PEMC conference played an important role in the history of power electronics, not only in the Central Europe, but also worldwide. You showed us many distinguished uh, researchers who participated in this conference. And I think that we made a, a contribution to the power electronics development. One thing which I would like to maybe add to your presentation is that uh, PMC Council has also ambition to support uh, Europe, uh, Central and Eastern Europe with the projects. And we had in the past several uh, European projects where the PMC Council members were united under the flag of, for example, PMC Web Lab, but also more projects in the past. And we have ambition also to support uh, this kind of uh, development and European projects. Thank you for your wishes and for, the, uh, for your wise words. The conference reached uh, Abraham uh, age and it means that it's wise already and still full in the power. And I, uh, I like your uh, wishes to success of the future of the conference, for the future of the conference and especially for the new generation. So this way, uh, I would like to uh, introduce now chairman of the award committee, Lech Grzeziak. And I understand from organizers that we are now going live to Warsaw, where uh, chairman of the award committee, Lech Zeziak, will, Professor Lech Zeziak will uh, introduce the first recipient of the Istvan Nat Award. So Professor Lech Zeziak, please take your role as a chairman of the award committee and introduce the first recipient of the Professor Istvan Nat Award. Thank you very much. And uh, I would like to say first few words uh, about uh, uh, power electronics and motion control uh, awards. And uh, we uh, have to 
different uh, awards won. Uh, the uh, highest PMC uh, awards is uh, um, the uh, Professor Istvan Nagy awards, which we can observe on the screen at the moment. And the second one is um, uh, the PMC awards for outstanding service and achievements. And first, uh, I would like to uh, say a few words about uh, the Istvan Nagy awards. Uh, it is, like I said, uh, the highest PMC award and is uh, proposed uh, be annually for the lifetime time achievement and contribution. And uh, we are taking into consideration uh, industrial and academic career, uh, publication in international recognized journals, uh, management of major project and research program, and uh, also the candidate should uh, be active in local and international organization in field of the power electronics, electric energy and control. On behalf of the Power Electronics and Motion uh, Control Committee, as uh, chairman of the Awards Committee, I have to honor to hand out the Istvan Nagy Award to uh, Professor uh, Mariusz Malinowski. Uh, Mariusz Malinowski is very well recognized uh, professor in field of power electronics in the world. Uh, he is very active in uh, organization, but uh, maybe I would like to give some um, short introduction. Um, uh, he achieved a doctor degree in year 2001 and uh, um, in year uh, in 2011, uh, he finished uh, the habilitation uh, and uh, just two years ago uh, achieved uh, the title of professor. Uh, he's working at Warsaw University of Technology in Institute uh, of Control and Industrial Electronics. And uh, at the moment, uh, he is uh, uh, vice rector uh, at uh, our university. And uh, of course, he is well recognized in the um, world uh, uh, as uh, um, active uh, um, member of the IEEE uh, organization. And uh, uh, at the moment, he is uh, um, president uh, elect of uh, um, Industrial Electronic uh, Society. And uh, just uh, uh, in a few months' time, uh, but uh, maybe to be more precisely, 1st of September next year, uh, he will be um, uh, president of uh, this society. And uh, uh, his uh, um, achievement uh, in field of uh, power electronics is uh, uh, well recognized. Uh, he is author of many, many uh, uh, papers uh, published in the um, IEEE uh, transaction and uh, also the records of uh, huge factor number of citations is uh, very, very huge. And uh, it is uh, my uh, honor to hand out the Istvan Nagy Award to Professor Marius Malinowski. Thank you very much. Professor, it is. Maybe I will. The, uh, uh, Award. Uh, congratulations, and uh, for next three minutes, the floor is yours. 
Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, this is a great honor for me to, uh, to get this award. So thank you very much for the uh, DMC Council. Thank you very much for the award committee and thanks very much, Professor Grzesiak, uh, chair of this uh, award committee. Maybe I will show the real black, which I just medal, which I just get, so you can see. I am uh, hope and I promise that uh, it will be motivation to that this bridge, which is on the reverse of this medal, will all the times uh, connect west with east industry with academia, as well as the past and the future, as was on the last slide of, of Professor Kashmir-Koski. Uh, of course, it's a uh, uh, memorable for me because I met uh, many times uh, Professor Natch. Uh, we discussed many times about the future of EMC. I remember our last meeting during the ICON conference in Japan, in Nagoya, when we spent many, many hours discussing about the, the, the future and the uh, possible collaboration of, of PMC and Industry Electronic Society. Uh, therefore, this is uh, for me, as, as, as I told, this is especially important that the name of this award, it's uh, Professor Natch Award, who was a really great ambassador of the collaboration of IEEE and Industry Electronic Society. But this award uh, will be not possible without, um, you know, collaboration with my colleagues, with collaboration with my colleagues from Warsaw University of Technology. Uh, of course, uh, we all understand we, that we are nothing without our, our teams, we are nothing without our colleagues in the labs who are spending a many of hours doing together the, the, some of the experimental results, publishing the papers, preparing everything. Without those colleagues, I think that um, uh, this moment would be not, not possible. Especially, I would like to thank my mentor, Professor Marian Kazmierkowski, who was also some of the, uh, giving me some of the guidance for, for the future. And uh, I hope that uh, this collaboration with, with this team, with Professor Kazmierkowski, with other colleagues from Warsaw University of Technology, as well as uh, with other colleagues uh, EMC uh, will be fruitful forever. Thank you very much. Again, I will show again this nice, nice plug. Thank you. So, Professor Peter Kornandi, yeah. now is your turn. May I start? Uh... Please, please wait for the second award list. Now is Professor Peter Corondi is going to introduce the co-chair of the award committee. Um, so it, it was a really a, a great pleasure for me to see uh, the, uh, this plug. And uh, I, it is uh, uh, remind me really Professor uh, Nagy, uh, he, that is his uh, uh, pronunciation, his name. And uh, uh, I am also very happy that, uh, that uh, 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 award goes to Poland. He, since uh, we uh, have a long, uh, very good relationship, uh, uh, which uh, started with Professor Kochara, and uh, I, I think uh, it is a uh, 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 good strength uh, or or cooperation, and and I really congratulate uh, to. Uh, Marius, and uh, I wish uh, him a lot of uh, uh, energy. Uh, <clears throat> I know that he did a lot of work in uh, industrial uh, electronic society, and uh, uh, I hope that he can help us uh, as a, a, mm, let's say, no, as a, a, a father. Uh, organization, I, I, we can consider IEEE as a father organization of uh, PMC uh, Council. Okay, so congratulate. And <clears throat> I really very happy uh, that uh, Marius, you received this uh, award. Uh, and uh, I think 
it was a good uh, selection. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. So now I would like to introduce Professor William Pedak, who is the co-chair of the award committee and who will uh, offer the second award to the second recipient. Professor William Fedak, floor is yours. Yes, okay, thank you. Do you hear me, yes, everybody. So welcome all here in this session, uh, giving the awards uh, to the famous, uh, bird famous specialist in power electronics and motion control. The second one, uh, specialist, uh, we uh, proposed in uh, the award committee and uh, approved uh, in the PMC Council is uh, Professor Patrick Wheeler from University of uh, Nottingham. Let me uh, tell uh, several words about his uh, when that, uh, he, he graduated and, uh, in a PhD degree uh, received in 93 in, uh, at the University of Bristol in England. Then he moved to the University of Nottingham when he worked as, uh, as uh, from beginning as a research uh, assistant uh, in the School of Electrical and Electronic Engineering. Uh, in 96, he became lecturer and uh, uh, in uh, uh, 2008, uh, professor uh, at the University of Nottingham uh, in power electronic systems and uh, power electronics machines and control group. So his, uh, his expertise uh, is uh, concerns uh, multi-level converters, power conversion, uh, matrix converters, uh, and uh, technologies for more electric aircraft. Uh, uh, power converters for uh, so various uh, power system applications. So this was our proposal and uh, really it was approved and I am uh, great to introduce you once again, Professor Pat Wheeler. Are you here available, Pat? So allow me to give you symbolically, symbolically the Medal of Professor Naj, Professor Naj Ispan Naj Award. Uh, have we this uh, this award here on the screen? Yes, it is here. So, once uh, I to you for uh, some uh, to tell us some word about your activity and to encourage uh, other people, especially young generation, to continue in our profession. Okay, uh, hopefully you can uh, hear me okay. Yes, we can hear you. Excellent. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, the, the PMC Council for, for giving me this award. Um, it was a, a great surprise. Uh, to, to be told about this um, uh, and uh, a, a big honour. So, so uh, thank you very much for that. Um, the PMC conference has always been a, a, an important part uh, of my power life in power electronics. Um, and it's given me some great uh, opportunities to, to travel, to, to meet new people and to make new friends. Um, and uh, the history we saw uh, a few minutes ago brought back some fantastic memories uh, of some great locations uh, and, and uh, some very, very good friends uh, I've made over the years. Um, it's interesting that this is the 50th uh, anniversary conference. Uh, my first PEMC conference uh, was 25 years ago uh, in Budapest in uh, 1996. Uh, I'll always remember this conference because uh, it was in the hotel um, uh, before that conference that my daughter took uh, her first steps as a, as a very young child. So uh, I know exactly when it was because I know the age of my daughter. Um, so uh, it's a very important part of, uh, of not, not only my life, but my family's life. Uh, Professor Nagy, who, who this uh, award is named after, uh, was always a great gentleman uh, and somebody who always made you feel very welcome uh, and very special at conferences. 
And this is something I think is important, is that uh, as a community, uh, we all remain friends and we all remain um, very welcoming to, to people who join the community uh, and become part of the, of the power electronics uh, world. Uh, and it was great to see so many young presenters at this conference presenting some really good work. Um, so uh, I'm very pleased that the uh, PEMC Council continues to, to uh, make this conference work and to make this a, an open uh, and welcoming environment for everyone working in power electronics uh, across the world as well as in, uh, in Europe. Um, awards like this always go to individuals and um, it's never the work of one individual that, uh, that, that warrants an award. Uh, I've been very fortunate to work with a, a large, dedicated and great team of people, uh, both in Nottingham uh, and through collaborations uh, around the world. Uh, and I feel very lucky and privileged to be in that position. Um, and I also uh, thank uh, both my family uh, and, uh, uh, and uh, th those who I'm close to um, for, for their never-ending support uh, and patience uh, in my power electronics activities. Um, so, so thank you to the, more, to, to, to the people who've supported me through that, uh, particularly Mariana, who I believe is in the audience. So uh, I, th I think I'll end by just saying thank you very much for this award. It's a great honour. Uh, and uh, I have great memories and hope to have great memories uh, of future events as well. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Pat, for these nice words. Uh, I would like to give the word back to Professor Lech Grzeziak and uh, ask him to present PMC Out Outstanding Service Achievement Award recipients. Please, Professor Lech. Sergiak, introduce recipients of the PMC Outstanding Service and Achievement. Uh, uh, thank you very much. And I would like uh, now to start uh, um, information about uh, uh, Outstanding Service and Achievement Awards and uh, um, this year it is special time because uh, we would like to give uh, this guide uh, of the um, awards uh, for um, any chairman in history of the uh, PMC uh, conference. And uh, uh, if uh, I go to remember, it is uh, uh, about 15 persons at the moment. Um, uh, the person uh, was nominated for the uh, power electronics and motion control um, uh, uh, outstanding service and achievement awards. And uh, uh, we will uh, see uh, the diploma uh, on the screen. And first, is address to Professor Włodzimierz Koczara. Uh, Professor Koczara is probably uh, also connected to the uh, conference, but uh, uh, I see it is uh, not time to present uh, personally uh, all of the professors and uh, uh, congratulations a lot. Uh, uh, it is very, very uh, good uh, achievement, and uh, I am happy personally uh, to give uh, this award to you. And next award is to Zdenek Cerowski. Also, congratulations, and uh, uh, it is uh, uh, really very, very um, big achievement as well. Next is for William Fedak. Next one is for Drago Ban. Next for Leonis Ribix. Uh, 
i si te kabel jezernik a what next one is for professor Krzysztof Zawiński at the moment we see uh, the screen and it is addressed to Slobodan Milcewski. Vladimir Katic. Ilha Mikolak. Stanimir Walczew. Peter Korondi. And uh, for life achievement, Professor Marian Piotr Kazimierkowski. It is also uh, some special uh, time for me because uh, uh, Professor Kazimierkowski is professor uh, at the Warsaw University of Technology. And we are working together for many, many years in Institute of Control and Industrial Electronics. Congratulations, Marian. Thank you very much. It is already end of the list of the outstanding service and achievement awards of power electronics and motion uh, control council. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Leif. Thank you. I would like to have some concluding words, if you allow me. Uh, share the screen. So, um, what you see on the screen is the logo of the IEEE PMC conference with the words of Industry Academia. This is the 19th PMC International Conference and the third in addition under the name of the IEEE PMC. I would like to congratulate you all who made it this way uh, to this conference because without you, it would not be possible these 50 years. And uh, this logo is showing Industry Academia. Logo was changing over the years and the beginning of the PMC conferences, the logo bared the words uh, East and West. And the bridge, which is on the screen, is the actual bridge in Budapest, Elizabeth Bridge. And it was supposed to uh, connect East and West. Um, Budapest was truly the, the place where the East and Western world was meeting especially in the 80s and 70s, when the rest of the Eastern Europe was more closed. Budapest was the only place where East Germans and West Germans could meet. And later, we recognized that the East and West uh, relation is uh, not anymore important because Budapest and also Central Europe became part of the Western world. And uh, we replaced the logo by Industry Academia, still keeping the same colors, same logo. Uh, in the last days, we had discussion on the new logo. Professor Peter Corondi introduced us a new logo proposal, which was uh, accepted by many people by very positive responses. So I believe that tomorrow in the PMC Council, we can maybe approve the new logo and I would be happy to present it in a closing ceremony. Uh, what we see also are technical sponsors, Industrial Electronics Society and Industrial Application Society, but there is more. There is also ECPE, European Central of Power Electronics. Today in the uh, roundtable discussion with the industry, Thomas Harder from ECPE will take part and represent the ECPE. We also have connections with the KIPE, Korean Institute of Power Electronics, and Industrial Electronics uh, of, uh, Institute of Electrical Engineering of Japan. So I would like to just uh, have a few words about the PMC Council. Uh, the PMC Council is a voluntary organization of academics and researchers from industry. The PMC Council selects the venue of the IEEE PMC conference, which has to be approved by the outcome of the Industrial Society. 
also select conference chairmen, chairs, and the keynote speakers. The PMC Council is headed by the chairman and three vice chairmen, as introduced by Marian Kaczmarkowski. <coughs> Just briefly uh, talk about mission. The IEEE PMC conferences provide forum for presentation and discussion of new ideas in the field of industrial electronics and motion control. It integrates specialists from both academia and industry. The IEEE PMC conference series fulfill needs of researchers, mainly from PMC countries. I often get questioned, what are the PMC countries? Well, there are countries where the PMC members are from, but covering great part of the Central and Eastern Europe. And also attracts top contributions from all over the world. A special attention is devoted to evoking mutual collaboration of participants to prepare, prepare joint international research projects by organizing project-oriented CEO sessions and roundtable discussions during the conference. In the past, we had several European projects covering the PMC Council members. Significant support is devoted to young scientists. So in the last uh, decades, the PMC, IEEE PMC conference also named PMC or APE PMC conference has become the largest and most important conference in industrial electronics and motion control in Central and Eastern Europe. Um, this is uh, further uh, the features of the conference. It is the largest and most important conference on industrial electronics and motion control in Central and Eastern Europe, held in even years, is organized on a bi-yearly basis usually in September, trying to avoid an overlap with the date of organization in the other conferences, offer a unique forum for scientists and individual experts to discuss state of the art and future developments, organize an exhibition in parallel with every conference. Now this time it was very uh, small exhibition, but still we had exhibitor as well. Create a high quality forum for young scientists and special reasonable cost. This cost is very important uh, for the region of Central Eastern Europe and we keep the cost as low as possible. It's organized in a venue alternating in various countries according to an application approved by the PMC Council and recommended to the IEEE Industrial Trade Society, XCOM. The PMC Council also selects chairman, chairs, and keynote speakers. Controlling respective body is the PMC Council. The local conference organizing committee is responsible for the organization of the event of the venue. Conference is supervised by International Steering Committee, taking care of the scientific content and quality of the contributions, uh, gives the chairman of the IEEE PMC conference the full authority regarding the financial matters of the conference. At the same time, he or she is obliged to meet all the promises included in the application and accepted by the PMC Council and uh, uh, IEEE societies. Co uh, the conference is supported by the PMC Secretariat in Budapest with relation in the conference, and we expect Expect around 400 attendees. Now this year it's lower because of the corona, uh, but we hope in the coming years we will come back to the original number. Ratio of the rejected papers is around 30% traditionally. We like to provide and we try to provide a special friendly atmosphere to fulfill the conference goals. And important for the uh, participants is that we submit the conference papers to Web of Science and IEEE Explore. PMC Council candidate, how to become one. Um, this is a criteria, international recognized researcher and academic, recommended by at least two council members, participating in at least two conferences within the last six years, and serving as a reviewer, session chair, or special session organizer. And of course, it's approved by the PMC Council. We also uh, have different categories of the members. Except the PMC board, which is the chairman and three co chair, we have also PMC executive committee members. This category of the PMC council members is dedicated to active members who have exhibited extraordinary service leadership in the PMC council activities and participate in the PMC council meetings. These members have a voting right. One representative of the IEEE Industrial Trust Society is also a member of the council. Then we have also life PMC council members. These are the members who devoted a minimum of 10 years of service to the PMC council and did not participate in the PMC council meetings during the last four years. After participation in the council meeting, they may reinstate 
uh, their voting rights upon request and become again executive committee member of the council. Of course, the conference is traveling around, across the central and eastern Europe, and we always have a call for venue. Now I can present to you call for venue to the IEEE PMC 2024 and 26 conferences. This is the time schedule of the call for venue. September 1st, 2021, expression of interest should be uh, presented to the PMC Council. PMC Council will give an advice on the presented uh, expression of interest. In February, a full bid should be submitted. April, present the venue in the meeting in Brasov, venue of the next, next conference. May, a PMC Executive Committee voting and approval in June from the ETCOM of the Antropoly Industrial Electronic Society and September 2022, announcement and presentation of the new venue during the conference in Brasov. This is the message from my side and I would like to congratulate to all of you who participated in the conference to the 50 years anniversary and I wish and I believe that the conference is uh, mature and will survive next 50 years. Thank you all. And I would like to toast to the next 50 years of the conference. Thank you. And uh, hereby I close the ceremony. Okay. Okay, hi. Bye bye.